Play. And Middle Tennessee Hospital has a spooky designation as one of the most haunted places in Tennessee. One hospital that's filled with the spirits of patients who never checked out. Why do they call it the body box? The body box is, this is where they kept the, the dead bodies. I just ran smack right into somebody and it scared the life out of me. The legend has it, now the building houses paranormal activity. Tonight, we're inside of one of the most haunted hospitals in America, the Old South Pittsburgh Hospital. Nelly, I know you died here. You took someone's life. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, this one now, right next oh. to us. So I'm alone down here now in the shadow man's hallway. Can you step away from the bed? I'm not afraid of you. I'm not scared of you. Kill. You want to kill me? Tonight, we're inside of one of the most haunted hospitals in America. This is the Old South Pittsburgh Hospital, a hospital that some have claimed to be the scariest place on earth. Uh, uh, There are so many different spirits and stories here in this hospital, but let me tell you, during the interviews we've already felt and heard things, we've seen things. This place is no joke. As you can see, we're set up in one of the spookiest hallways in the building, about to begin our investigation, but let's go back to earlier today. You're watching The Paranormal Files. So we're rolling up right now. Now this, oh yeah, it is here, I think. I think this is it. Yeah, this place is known to be so god haunted that <laughs> it's crazy that we're actually here right now. And a Middle Tennessee hospital has a spooky designation as one of the most haunted places in Tennessee. So I've known about the old South Pittsburgh Hospital for a long time now. This place is infamous in the paranormal community. A number of shows have filmed there, a number of people I know have been there and it's supposed to be extremely haunted. As you're about to see in the tour, there's some really, really interesting history when it comes to the patients that were in the hospital, how people died, where they died, the functions that the hospital you know, served, the body room, the little boy who died from the snake bite. Yeah, this history is, is really compelling, but the place is creepy. I have to tell you, it is very creepy, but let's cut right now to our interview and Let's begin our investigation of this notorious, notorious haunted hospital. I am Heather Wayman from South Pittsburgh Hospital. I'm one of the tour guides here, and we're going to discuss of South Pittsburgh. We're going to start right here in 1959 and walk this way. This is the heart of the hospital, the original part. Over here, you have your cardiac. This goes into cardiac and nuclear medicine. Then down through here, you've got some of our posters of our original doctors. Our original doctors is Dr. Havern, Dr. Taylor, and Dr. Hedrick. Very interesting individuals. You got Dr. Taylor that enjoys the cigarette pipe, I mean the rabbit tobacco in the pipe. Then you've got Dr. T um, Havern that enjoys smoking cigarettes, and you can actually smell this around you. Dr. Taylor, it kind of manifests the smoke. Through here is biohazard. 
prior to the hospital when it was the add-on in 1970s. This was actually the original nursery and this was labor and delivery. If you'll check it out right here, this is the dumb waiter. We're actually over the kitchen, which is the original part of the hospital as well. This is physical therapy. We cannot go there yet. You'll turn behind us. This is day surgery. One of my favorite areas is this area right here, just shadow play all the way through. You'll see nurses coming in and out. You'll see actually the actual nurse outfit. You'll see the little children come through every now and again. You'll catch a ball going down the hallway. Right down here is what we call the crossroads. And you'll see the white coats kind of flaring past you. You'll see um, just some of the most random little heads stick out. We have a few little boys down there and a couple of little girls that like to run this hallway. And you'll notice their little toys out. But we'll walk this way and we'll go toward the crossroads and the emergency room. Right here's the x-ray room if you want to check it out. It's actually cheaper for them to buy another x-ray machine for the new hospital, which was Grandview, than to move this. So we actually got two machines and two chest machines. And I don't know what they're called, but they're clicker machines. The little clicker thing the nurse runs around. This was the only operating room before it was moved to three. We'll go this way to the crossroads and we'll meet the body box and the ER waiting room and then we'll head over to the ER. So the body box is um, one of our top areas. Emergency room waiting is just always very busy. One of my favorite experiences down here, we was actually entering the restroom right here and a man, full voice, I mean, it was amazing. Where's the pharmacy? Can you take me to the pharmacy? Two full host sentences. My team, my group that I had that day was just blowed away. They were like, heck yeah, but it was awesome. I mean, here is the best place, I believe, in the hospital to do the Estes method, sit in here and then ask questions out there. And it's pretty phenomenal. We also have a man down here named John that loves to interact with women. So what, why do they call it the body box? The body box is, this is where they kept the, the dead bodies. There was no morgue here. So actually you would go out of the building and they would have brought the body into here until the corner came to pick it up. It was actually enough for three beds and a cleaning table, but you could also put another one there too, as if you needed to. There was just a hole cut in the wall right here. So like if you were a female on the other side peeing, there was dead bodies over here. And it actually had its own cooling system in here. Wait, so this hole was here? No, that was cut out after the hospital. Oh. And that's the original sign, the room mm -hmm. room sign right there. That's one of them, and then we have another one still hanging up. Actually, we was down here Saturday night doing the Estes method, and Miss Rhonda was in here, and we believe it was this that like moved. When we came back in here, it was kind of shifted a little bit and like really wobbly. And the other day when we were down here cleaning, I had shoved it right there between the handle and the door, and then it was moved. Did somebody else move it before I got back down here? Good possibility, but I know what it hurt on that recorder and in that room that night too. <laughs> so. so this place is active, very active. Yeah. Okay. There's, I'm in this building, I would say about five days a week. It's always something. Now some days you come in and they're just too busy to talk to you. You're just gonna see me do my work and leave me alone. Other days it's, hey, hello, wanna play? Yeah. We have a man over here in the emergency room. Every time you walk in there, he'll say hi most of the time. This is a good area for children. If you don't have children interacting down here with you, then it's usually that's when Dr. Taylor appears and that's when you get the smoke. We was actually here one time. One of our volunteers is really, really fond of Dr. Taylor and the lady that was sitting beside her, we actually had to take her out of the building because the smoke was choking her so bad. It was so thick. It's pretty awesome. Wow. So this little area right here would have been your little triage little door. And this to the left is the other x-ray room. And this is the emergency room. So this is where we have Buddy. He kind of hangs out here or on third floor sometimes by the, uh, the ORs. But he was actually... Um, he went to go collect some worms to go fishing. His mother looked outside and he was laid out in the yard. She brought him here and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. Somebody looked down and found a little worm and come to find out it was copperheads. But he had been bit in his little pockets where he had stuck the worms. 
and so he passed away here. He loves his balls. He also asked to re request for you to read his book. He asked for a dinosaur. He got a dinosaur. He asked for a fire truck. He got a fire truck. Um, but he gets what he asked for. He's top dog. And actually, I do have a picture of him if you guys want to use it. Yeah. An awesome picture of Buddy. And I'll show you where the picture was taken so that way you can debunk it before you look at it. So through here is what we call the Tri-City Clinic. This was actually the original that transferred from Birmingham. I mean, not from Birmingham, from Alabama, where they decided, okay, let's move that here from there to here. And this is what all started it. This is all doctor's rooms down through here. There's also the dentist and the pharmacy, if you guys want to walk this way. Um, this hospital was also a teaching hospital, and that's one of this rooms was. Here's your in-house pharmacy. You can go in from the back right there. This is where you would get more of like your medicines only the doctor can touch. That kind of thing. There's a shadow right there behind you. Did y'all hear that? Y'all didn't hear that? It was like a woman. She was, woo. You didn't hear that? It was like right here. Okay, so this is the dentist's office. We can't go there yet. I get so excited. Okay, so this is like the end of the hallway. I'm just excited. I'm walking. I get so excited. There's um, this last room, we can't go in there unfortunately yet. And as you can tell, we are still working on the hospital. Last February, we were at 94 tons of trash and we're still taking things out of the hospital when Ronnie bought it. But that's where the doctor's office, um, when his office office was. And so you see him a lot down here pasting. This hallway period is just shadow figures. When you guys come down here and investigate, definitely cat ball. Like, definitely. They love their little cat balls. If you guys don't have one, we have one you got to use. We got plenty of those. I think we have like 30, honestly. We have too many. Right here is the picture that I'm going to show you of Buddy when we find my phone. But it's actually a picture. You can see a little boy sitting right here. And as you can tell, there's nothing right here. But the view is the camera shooting this way. So this is what we call Tri-City Clinic backslash hardy's so this is kind of like where all the elderly men used to kind of come and hang out back in the day and have their breakfast and get their prescriptions this was the dentist office waiting area this is the bill paying area um i'll show you guys the cool little floor safe in there in a minute this door was one of the original entrance as far as like a side entrance so when you guys leave in the morning if you guys want to look at that it kind of helps you explain it outside a little bit so we'll go through billing if you guys want to walk in this room and look in the floor right there is cute little safe that's where they kept their food at I mean their food <laughs> their money at there's money in there yeah yeah people throw money in there so this right here is the dumb waiter I mean the medical dumb waiter I don't know what the actual word is because I can't remember it but this is a medical dumb waiter in Heather's words this wall right here was the original stopping place this was the first add-on in 1961 and it's simply upstairs and downstairs it's what people call the basement it's not a basement it's just the add-on of medical records this room does have a shaky floor don't get scared um i don't know it's just like if you do it really soft it's just like really soft this is a good place to bring teenagers and scare the bejesus out of them <laughs> this room is one of my favorite rooms that you're not allowed to eat and drink up here and sometimes we'll come up here and I have breakfast just to get a little reaction. And you'll actually hear those shelves shaking in there. But this is where the doctors would like come and write their bills up and chill and whatnot. And then we're back to the Tri-City Clinic. Nice TV. Well, yeah, I know, right? I had a couple of issues like that. So this is where you would have originally came into the hospital. When we get downstairs on first floor, I'll show you guys the outside of the courtyard but it kind of shows where we were this room right here if you guys want to walk in there you can if you're not but this is where the doctors and nurses was like an extra little area if you know if they needed a shield extra shift needed a break needed to take a shower because they got pooed on or whatever this is where they went that just doesn't sound fun 
Well, I could only imagine what they had to torture through. You guys watch that right there. So biohazard is biohazard. It is what it is. Any kind of labs or anything like that was done in here. They actually had emergency pool shower here. Prior to that, like I said, it was labor and delivery. So this area is, of course, the second floor nurse's station. This is the main area. This was an add-on in the 70s. In between 71 and 74 is, we don't have exact date, but that's what we're shooting for. Pretty much jack of all trades at a typical nursing station in a hospital. You've got your med call, you can call, you can do, pick up the phone, act like you're talking to somebody. Nurse Betty actually passed away here in this bathroom. She had a heart attack. They searched for her for hours, couldn't find her. Finally realized she was in the bathroom. And she's still here to this day, hanging out with us. So um, she's very, very community communicative with um, dowsing rods and K2s. Um, there's a lot of children in this area too. A lot of giggles. And one of my favorite stories is, it was about 12 of us in a group, and of course, you know, there's always that one person that don't have a recorder, right? Well, it was just 12 people that didn't have a recorder going. And we're all sitting here talking about Miss Betty. Literally right here, you hear a little girl laugh. And we're all like, oh, she done it again. And it was just like, nobody had not one recorder going. Talking about mad. I was a little upset. <laughs> Nobody had a recorder. That's always how it goes. Oh, it was. And then she done it twice. Damn. So, this is going to be your ICU and CCU. Um, of course, the typical. You had three beds in here. You could push four without a lot of medical equipment. But they didn't try to do that. And that is one of the reasons why the hospital closed down in 1998. Is due to HIPAA. They lost, you know, two patients to one room. They went down to one room. So, therefore, they had to turn around and just ran out of room as you could tell as small as the emergency room was and this was the critical side once again only three beds this room right here where you guys are set up at that's actually the dialysis room I have a favorite story in there I have tons of favorite stories we were in there one day and we just kept hearing this weird noise couldn't figure it out it almost sound like a screen door sliding like sitting there investigating 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 over and over and over and over and over again we could hear it we finally figured it out we put a sock up in the little rail where you pull the curtains and when we pulled that sock and that curtain, that's exactly what it was. It was like the residual energy of that curtain being pulled. So it was really awesome. This room and this room on the other side, these two rooms are the only two rooms in the hospital that had its own ventilation system. You know, the hospital was open there in TB time. So therefore, they tried to keep them isolated, but two rooms wasn't enough. There was actually a lady that, she passed away here. There was nothing they could do for her. She had cancer and she was burned up. She was getting burned up from her tummy and her legs from the inside out, and they just tried to give her pain medicine. Of course, you know, legal, but she ended up having to pass away. I've heard one time scream for help, but you can actually hear her scream for help, and they said it was just absolutely horrible. Patient rooms. This room and that room, these two rooms was frequent flyer rooms. So pretty much if you was the mayor, the chief, here a lot, this is your two rooms right by the nurse's station, and got it good to go. This hallway, patient rooms. Patient rooms, patient rooms, that's probably about all you get to it. Here, paranormal wise, there is a man right down here that lost his leg and you will see him. Sometimes he'll lean like against the wall and you can see that he only has one leg. Um, nice dude. Sometimes he just don't wanna be bothered. During the day he takes naps a lot. You'll hear him say, leave me alone. Um, shadow play, shadow play a lot, especially during the day with the rooms. Like tonight, if you guys was to open those last two doors down there with the, like that silhouette of light coming through, mm -hmm. you'll see like patients in the rooms or doctors or whatever, whoever it is. And you'll see the, the shadow play on the floor. So that's pretty cool. Um, we'll go down here. This is um, right there where that fire extinguisher is. That was Mr. Mann's room. We don't have a name. Paranormal, I get James, but I don't know if that's real or not. So that's the guy without the leg? Yes, sir. Paranormal, his name is James. Hope you good? Yep. This is Miss Nellie. She was very popular when the hospital was going and she is very popular now. Do not sit on her bed without permission and do not close her door. She don't like her door closed because back in the day, she, okay, so her family just dropped her off here. They didn't know what was going on. Come to find out she had dementia. And they finally chased her around, chased her around. Figured out what was wrong with her, gave her her room. So needless to say, 
Most days she would go visit the other people. She would go staying out with the children while their parents was, had to go to work or whatever. Day she was having a bad day, they would close the door and she has bells on them. So when the bells jingled, they would know she was coming out. She passed away in this room simply from dementia. Very sweet lady. She loves to give dowsing rod hooks. This guy is our candy man, Wayne and Wade. Wayne was a drug addict. He came here to get better. In theory, he would have died tonight and been released tomorrow. You can actually see him coming in and out of his bedroom. I don't know, it's usually in between like nine and 11. It's like almost guarantee with the bobble in and in and out, like he's waiting for his drug dealer to come. So, but he passed away in there. Then we have Wayne right here. He was a motorcycle guy. He ended up having a, um, a wreck. The only thing the man wants to do is smoke his cigarettes and leave him alone. So he's got a cigarette over there in the window. If you guys bring the cigarette out, and set it in the floor by a cat ball or something or offer him a cigarette. Most of the time you get pretty good responses with him. He's a lot of fun though. He does get anal when it comes to Miss Nellie. What do you mean by that? Um, Miss Nellie, she's one of those people that she's kind of loved in the spiritual world period. And like I've seen, I've heard Wayne go down there and like you'll hear a man's voice and be nice or off the bed. And you, that's, I just think it's Wayne. He's just Nellie's protector. A lot of stories in this one hallway. Yeah. Oh, this is my favorite area. Everybody's scared of this area. I just think it's so much fun. This area, of course, is the nurse's station. There's a kid, and I don't know much about him. I haven't really investigated him enough. It is a boy that runs around and just, like, plays around the desk. I don't know much but if you just see a kid, I don't even have a name for him yet. <laughs> so third floor is kind of weird because it did change over. So prior to 1986 is when they closed the, the nursery and quit, quit delivering babies unless absolutely emergency. So back here was your labor and delivery recovery. And down here is where you would have your babies. And then here's where the babies would have went. And then you also have the sick babies, which is in a room around the corner. Paranormal wise, you've got very busy nurses up here. The nurse that is up here, respect her babies. Don't stay out of her way. If you go in there and play like a baby crying or something, go completely quiet with an EVP recorder. You'll hear the doors opening. You'll hear um, coos. We had a full blown cry Saturday night. I think it was Saturday night. Um, there's a doctor up here. I thought I just seen him shoot down that hallway. He is really cool. He likes for you to walk proper, be proper, be in uniform, do what you're supposed to do up here. Sometimes you can ask him stupid questions. Like one time I was walking through here and I was like, oh look, it's a horsey. Plain as day, you hear on the recorder, it's a horse. I played for you, it's pretty awesome. We were in autoclave one day and walked straight into a big man. We're like, excuse me, you know, how are you? You're not in uniform. My bad, I'll leave, you know, so it's kind of cool. <laughs> the room right here and the room right here is your, they go just to the other side in the soil waste room, but those are the locker rooms where the doctors and nurses would change, and we'll discuss that when we get over there. Um, here's where you go into the nursery at, and this is where we're going to go in just a second, but we're going to go around that corner. So here is your labor and delivery. Like I said, 1986, they took this out, and first they started out as an OR room, and then they just turned it into supply room. This is also where our seven foot shadow man likes to hang out at. I feel like the seven foot shadow man is just somebody that is, he was different. He was made fun of, so he's really skittish and laid back. And you have to kind of coach him to come out. And he loves Oreos and apple juice. So this is the other OR rooms that echoes really bad. So we'll dip this area real fast. We're actually gonna come out right here over by the office. But this is another, this OR room one, two, and three. My personal opinion, OR three is the rocker. Um, I do enjoy the hallway as well, but not like I do that room. And why do you like the th three the best? I 
don't know if it was just like a main OR room or if it was just certain things done in there, but I feel happy. I feel like it's more of an interaction, not, like I feel more sadness in this OR room. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if it was just like maybe a different kind of, I just think it's happy and fun and like there wasn't a bunch of sadness and hurt people in there maybe. I don't know. Like that's a total different energy in both rooms. This room is like a little bit more sad. That one down there is just like a, a gut, like bleh, feeling. So. so actually to the left here, this is where they kept everything for surgery. And this comes into the autoclave. So we're actually coming backwards from surgery. So you actually would have came through here, rinsed all your junk off, put your tray here, and then it would have went in here to be sterilized. In here is kind of jack of all traits as far as like interaction. You get tons of different people. And sometimes you have to slow them down because they just get too fast for you. Um, there is a man that enjoys the, the cat ball and you can kind of get him to go back and forth, like three different cat balls. Just getting to ask him to touch different ones is pretty cool. We're gonna come out, and this was the labor and delivery and recovery. Oh, God, that dummy in there. <laughs> and this is all of third floor. Third floor is not very big. And um, through here is a little biohazard, and this is where they kept the gas and stuff at. So, this is the courtyard. Oh, this one will shut off the center. If you want to scan this, so this part of the hospital, these three floors was not there in 1959. The original was from that concrete wall to around where your back is. And this started out at 22,000 square foot. And like I said, 1961, I don't know how many square feet that is, but when it closed, it was 68,000 square foot. So what's that building? That is where we were. The shaky shelves is right there. Oh, wow. And then downstairs oh. is the other. This door right here is your original entrance. That's where the crossroads is. Certainly looks creepy. I advise you guys to come out here for just at least a few minutes tonight and just watch in the windows. It's pretty cool. But if you come out here, make sure you put this brick right here because you will get locked out here. Hmm. Yeah, no thanks. This is the add-on. Here's 1959. We're gonna go to the kitchen. This is where the truck was delivered. And this is where your purchasing office was, where you paid your bills and whatnot. Y'all smell that? Mm -hmm. Hazelnut coffee. Hello guys, what's up? Your coffee smells so good tonight. You smell it? Mm -hmm. You smell the coffee? Okay, so this has been open since August. This room is phenomenal. I don't know if they're just excited because you know, Hey, we got our space open back up. Like I said, it's, it's kind of cool right now because you got the pure hazelnut coffee nut. I mean, hazelnut coffee. But I have smelled, we heard a happy birthday one time down here. So we went quiet, did an EVP, started smelling buttercream frosting. Walked over here into the actual kitchen part and smelled flowers. You can kind of smell something right here. What is that? Hope. Is that that buttercream? I smell flowers right here. So this is what you get in the kitchen. There was for about a month straight back in the summertime, almost every day that I came in the building, I could tell you what they made for lunch. It was pretty cool, especially after that build, I mean, that room was open. Down in here, my favorite person to play with is a little boy named Joshua. Don't have a clue about his story. Don't know who he is, how he got here, but he's cute. He's a little guy, and he's got little pajamas on, got little dogs and um, dinosaurs and stuff on it. And he just likes to run in cat balls. He loves cat balls and balloons. You can see his little balloons everywhere. Um, and he usually asks for peanut butter and jelly. In here, is the walk-in freezer and cooler. I don't know why this door's kind of shut. I really don't know any paranormal stories in here. Um, I just think it's a really cool area to investigate because it's always something weird. Like you can get like to hearing a box rip open, hearing the tape rip open. Um, 
one day somebody came in here and said two boxes of nuggets um one day we were down here and we were investigating i think hope was with me and we all got sick to our stomach like all was that you it's not okay we were okay fine. maybe you weren't with us but it, me and the guest and whoever was with me that day we all had to leave like we were just, and then when we got to the end of the hallway you heard somebody say it's the mayonnaise so, I guess the mayonnaise was bad and we Colin, all ate it. <laughs> Colin hates mayonnaise. Yep. So, one of the cool things about the hospital, and not a lot of people realize it when you look at the layout, but the elevators, you cannot add to an elevator shaft. So, the hospital only had two flights of steps and one, well, two dumb waiters, and they would actually have to just rotate that food and everything was just, just steps. And the dumb waiter so can you imagine but they were skinny <laughs> so now we're going to add on which is 70s yeah. so we have dr o in the elevators so dr o actually i can't remember if he's 41 or 47 when he passed away so dr o he started having a heart attack he actually came to the hospital came to work took some medicine feeling way much better turned around started having another heart attack. They actually took him from here to Chattanooga and that's where he passed away at the age of 41. Um, you actually can still hear him to this day here, call code blue. Um, you'll hear this button push. I've only heard the elevator ring one time audibly, several times on recorder. There was actually a nurse that was on vacation. When she came back from vacation, she went up to the second floor, she got off the elevator and the other nurse was like, so, have you heard about Dr. O? And she was like, no, I just seen him. He went on up to three. She was like, no, baby, he died last week. There was no way that was him. So she got her belongings and left. Um, so this area right here is just gastro stuff. Um, there is a lot of people reports have gotten getting tummy aches, sour bellies in this area. My personal experience down here one day, I went to go up to second floor and there was a nurse that walked out of that room and asked me why I was out of my room. And I was like, excuse me, I'm going back to my room. And I went upstairs. So I guess I was not supposed to be out here. Um, through here is Jim's area, which prior, <clears throat> when the hospital was open, it was just patient rooms, mainly gynecology stuff when they closed that up to upstairs. This was Jim's kitchen. This was his living room where he passed away at. He actually passed away um, when the private residence was up on second, when the hospital closed down, he, they went on vacation, they came back and found him dead. He was here roughly 10 days, had a diabetic shock slash heart attack. I'm not sure exactly which one. His body was here for 10 days? Mm -hmm. In the summertime. In the summertime. In the summertime, so it was probably pretty smelly. Mm -hmm. Our sheriff that we have right now was an officer and he actually worked that call. So he told Ronnie about it. The owner, yeah, so it was pretty gross. Um, Jim is pretty cool. He loves to smoke weed. So if you come down here, we're not smoking weed. He is. I'm just sitting down smoking one with him. I'm not legit. No drugs in the building. He also likes to cook. Sometimes you'll make smoke cookies down here. Jim does go to bed early, so usually before midnight, come and see him. And um, old music, ZZ Top, Brass Monkey. He likes Brass Monkey. Um, you remember that song, Missy Elliott, Work It? He likes that song. Um, says you have a K2 rim pod. He likes stuff. He can do the flashlight method as well. Um, he just asked for his TV about a month or so ago. So we actually heard that come on. Um, I think it was last weekend. It sounded like the button pushed. You know that. That's exactly what it sounded like. So it was kind of cool. But he asked for his TV. So we got the kids to bring him his TV. Wow. It's a weird feeling room. And he played the guitar. And sometimes when you're in there, you hear guitar picking. But this room right here, he actually has three rooms. I'll let you walk in there because it's really cool. It's, um, he actually filled these rooms full of foam. And that's what he used as far as like his recording studio and everything. He loved to make music. So it's a soundproof room. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Here's pictures of Jim and life. And if you'll zoom in on that picture, I have a picture like, like that in of him and death I'll show you guys Looks like a cool dude and so this right here was like a waiting room when the hospital closed down in 1998 it stayed open until 2002 and this hallway was three different doctor's offices 
So pretty much whatever you needed to see the doctor for, it was three different doctors and they just had these rooms going. Paranormal wise, there's a little boy named Adam down here and little redheaded boy, cute guy. I believe he had pneumonia and that's how he passed away. His room is the second, like one, two, three, that room. Um, he loves the balloon. He has a little giraffe down there as well. He likes to play with the balloons. You can usually get him to move it on command. If he's not working with you on command, just turn your back. He'll usually start getting him to go and play. He also likes REM pod. And if you ask him where he is to knock on the wall where he is, sometimes you can get him to knock on the wall to tell you where he is. I feel a cold breeze. Right? I just felt that too. Went this mm -hmm. way. Yeah. I can't. I can't tell you now why. <laughs> This is a good place for him down here at the end of this hallway. I don't know why the end of this hallway, but I see like a lot of blue and white, like lights just run through. Don't know what they are. They're not the people I want to talk to. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just like, oh yeah, that was cool. All right guys, I'm done. Wow. Awesome. So I guess a couple questions. Okay, what's up? What would be in your opinion the most, like two or three active places in here that we would check out? Tonight? I would have to say where I feel the most energy would probably be OR, that crossway right there in between those two areas. Definitely the emergency room, waiting and emergency room. I seen two shadow figures as soon as I got here. It was a man and a woman. So I don't know, maybe they're active up there tonight. So maybe you can. Yeah, okay. And you would. In the kitchen. I love the kitchen. Okay. Like I can sit down there for hours and play. And Buddy. Buddy's always ready to play. So I guess, final question. You'd say this place is haunted? Absolutely. Absolutely. I've seen, felt, heard. You could sit outside on the porch and see shadow figures in the yard. Oh! The little boy! Oh, the little boy! Riding the bicycle in the parking lot. I'm a mom. Okay, I get mad when I see little kids with no mamas, you know. I pulled up, when, oh, it gives me coach chills still to this day. Pulled up in the parking lot, and I'm taking the rope off, and I see a little kid over here in the parking lot riding his bicycle. Okay, no big deal, where's mama? Take the gate down, get in my car, scoot up. Little boy's riding his bicycle still, plain as day, as me and you are standing in this room right now. He disappears. There's nothing right before my eyes completely gone. I had looked at him twice before he disappeared. That's why he didn't have no mama because he was dead. Wow. Like, <laughs> wish I could see that. Yeah, me too. You want know? me tell you about the time I peed my pants? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a scare person. I don't scare very easily. When, usually when I scare, I'm like, Whoo <laughs> you know? I came in the building and I'm unlocking the door. I see two men standing right over here in front of the elevator. And they're standing like toward each other kind of. So I'm thinking they're gonna disappear. You know, they're gonna disappear in a second. Well, I come on in the door and I look up again and they both turn and look at me. I lost it. <laughs> I lost it. But that was- Right here. Right here. Right there on the floor. This is gonna be on YouTube. Hey. <laughs> we do pee our pants sometimes. We do get scared. <laughs> but yes, I went up to third floor one time. I heard a noise up there. It sounded like a chair moving. And I was like, hmm, okay, let me go look. I'm gonna brave this. I can do this. So I get up there on third floor. There's a man running down the hallway. And all you see is, is like a, it was like a blue and green with like white looking half moon, like the yin yang sign. Mm -hmm. That thing on there. But all you seen was him running down the yard, I mean, down, down the yard, down the hallway. It was great. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's well, right. I think we're good. Wow. Oh, that's... Hey, I'm Hope. Um, I'm another one of the volunteers here at OSPH. One time, me and my ghosty buddy, Heather here, we were going down towards the kitchen, just talking like, you know, how we normally do, just, you know, whatever, going through our rounds, checking everything out. And I thought that I had initially saw somebody in one of the rooms didn't think anything of it we continue to walk and i don't ever get a jump scare in this place like nothing bothers me i come here i just go to sleep whatever no big deal but anyway we're walking down that hallway and just something i just ran smack right into somebody and it's 
scared the life out of me, and I've never gotten scared here except for that one jump scare like that go into the kitchen. Don't know what it was, but I said, excuse me, and they just kept on walking back down the hall, right on past, like, get out of my way. Wow. And there's another lady I noticed one time, she smelled, it reminded me of like some Avon perfume, like I guess that, you know, grandma would wear back in the day. Every time I would go any place in this hospital, she would be right there. Go out the door, behind me. Go out into another room, always just follows me everywhere in this place. But I haven't noticed her mm, the last couple times I've been here. Is there any place in the hospital that feels more active? You. Um, for me, the ER waiting area is, it is always so loud to me whenever I go in there. And then if we're like trying to get um, anybody to communicate, I always have to ask them to come through one at a time because like five, six, seven, a dozen just try to come through at once and talk and I'm like, no, no, one at a time because then it gets like, it reminds me of like a classroom full of little kids, too many voices at once. I just want to hear one person at a time talking to me. But I think the, for me, the definitely the ER waiting area is pretty busy. And you'd say this place is haunted? Oh, for sure. I would, it's definitely haunted. For okay, sure. I think that's good. Looks All right, yeah, I've, I've been here since 2016 and uh, I've really only had maybe three experiences. One of them was right here in the, uh, the uh, nurse's station. Something told me it was sorry. Uh, I didn't realize it at the time that it was something talking to me. I thought it was my brother, but further later on in recording, listening to my recordings, it was something, it wasn't my brother. And another time, uh, me and my girlfriend Leanne, who's the historian here at the hospital, we were in Shadow Hall Hallway right there at the four-way crossroads, and we were doing a little EVP session, and something blocked out the light behind us and we didn't know what it was. And then I, the third one, third time that I've experienced something was over here in the ICU, I've seen the shadow go into the break room. But that's pretty much the only experiences I've ever had here. Those are some pretty crazy experiences though. Yeah, they were pretty crazy at the time, yeah. But you would agree that this place is haunted? Now I'm a skeptic and I would not say this place is haunted. I would say that it has paranormal activity, though, but not haunted. <laughs> what an interesting, uh, interesting way to put it. I like that. Thank you. It has paranormal activity, but it's not haunted. Mm -hmm. what, 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 yeah. What's your definition of that? Well, you know, the definition of haunted is that it's a reoccurring uh, same thing, you know, or the same ghost, whatever. Here, it's all kinds of stuff you get. People, this place is known for getting touch and hearing voices. Shadows is number one, too. And uh, that's just a lot of the paranormal activity that happens here. So it's basically got a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. It's kind Depend of semantics. Yeah, more. depending on what night you get here. Okay. Well. So we wanted to start our investigation on the third floor of the hospital. Not only is it the top floor and we could work our way down, but it's an area that has a number of different distinct spirits. You had the spirit of the biker in one of the rooms, the spirit of a handyman. You had the spirit of Nellie, the woman who had dementia who passed away in her room. And you had the nursery. So we felt like it was a natural starting point for our investigation to kind of call out to the spirits, see who was there, and then proceed. As you're about to see, it got weird quick. Okay, everybody, so now that you've seen the interviews, you know the stories of this place, here we are on the third floor. Nellie's room is right here. Remember, Nellie is the older woman with dementia who died here and she's protective of her bed. Over here we have the two men, the handyman and the biker. Down there is the infant's ward. Already we've had these cat balls go off. It seems like somebody's here and they're, they're wanting to uh, interact with us and we've been hearing noises. It's it's eerie in here, isn't it? It is. So I'm gonna take the camera. Okay. Are you, uh, what's your feel so far? It's our last night here. Yeah, 
last night, great place to start. Again, there was a, you saw the, the interview, there's a lot of history here, a lot of, there's a lot of characters here, a lot of stories, but I'm just ready to get going as usual. It's our last night of a long series. I'm excited. Let's see, okay. let's see what happens. Well, oh. All right, so to whoever's here in the hospital with us, the South Pittsburgh Hospital, whether you're a nurse or a patient, or you just, I don't know, you're something or somebody else. Maybe you're Nelly, maybe you're a guy who loves biking or motorcycling, riding a motorcycle. We're coming here with all positive energy and we just would love to communicate with you tonight. But I wanna introduce myself, my name's Colin. I'm Jeff. And, but what I'd really like at first is for you to just make a noise or if you see any of these little lights we have set up i know you probably have seen all these before they're little toys if you just walk towards the lights it'll set them off and it'll show us that you're here you've been playing with the cat balls those little balls already but i'd love to hear you you know run or knock on something or move a wheelchair or use your voice to say hi so can you do that for us let us know where you are Nelly, are you in here? Black thing. That's what I saw. Did you? Yeah. Like on the floor? No. Uh, oh. When I was over there setting up the static, I saw oh. something Ooh. black go from And I've got seat. like a, I saw it actually go, like a, almost like a mouse that went Phew. Like a black little blob Phew. on the carpet right there. It's really weird that you say that because when I was setting up the static, I saw, I thought a black blob come down from the ceiling like that. And I was like, what the f- Where are you? It seems like it always takes, you know, them to get used to us, mm -hmm. right? It's, I have a, oh, what was that? That was a very audible sound. Yeah, you can come closer, we're not afraid. You can move that balloon if you want, or play with these lights here. Let me know you're here. down here.
Are you down towards this area? guys can come out of your rooms. We're, we're friendly. We're just here to talk to you again and just confirm you're here. Can you move those wheelchairs down there? Maybe just push one a little bit so we hear it. Thanks for coming out of your room. Like we're gonna see you? You're here, Harry. Play with one of the lights. Make it go off. Make a play with one of the cat balls anywhere you want. It's like he's actually standing right there. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like straddling it, actually. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's actual, like, physical proximity. Okay, if you're over in that room by the blue triangle, Harry. Can you step out of the room or... You're misinterpreting me. Maybe it's not Harry. How are we misinterpreting you? If you could just step out of the room, we could talk more. And then we'd be able to interpret you. Look, look at the light at that. Are you playing with the light down there by the wheelchairs? If so, can you do that again? Someone's watching. Oh, okay. That's eerie. Who's watching? brighter what is going on with the triangle it's okay to come out miss nelly anybody by the way i throw something oh god i'll throw something okay we really we're okay with that Throw anything you want. 
Also, I'm just gonna say it may look like there's red light everywhere, but there, it's we're in the darkness right now. That light's the only light here. Did you throw something in here? Nellie, can I have permission to sit on your bed? It's an unknown crime. Who's associated with that crime? Can you say who? Nurse. Oh, nurse. Okay. Are you a nurse? Well, I said unknown crime. Who's it associated with? A nurse. Literally. Wow, that would be, you know, <laughs> that'd be like strange to think about, right? That could easily cause a death. An angel of death. Right. Can you tell us any more about this unknown crime with the nurse? We're right here. You can come out of the rooms and visit with us if you would. I'm going to go lights out again. Yeah, that's fine. Talk to us, talk into this device I have in my hand. Play with the lights. Anything you'd like to do, let us know you're here. Irish. Irish. If you guys don't give us some sort of a bigger sign that you're here, we're going to have to move on to a different part of the hospital. So eerily still. It is. Oriented a little bit or something, though. I feel like I'm being watched, you know? Like. The children sing. The children sing. You know, it's weird. Is It's the children's ward right down there. Is it? That's where I want to go next. Okay. The nurse that haunts there that tells people to be quiet. Remember? Oh. Okay, that's right. Down there. Thank you for respect. Remember? What? Miss Nellie. Everybody respects her, remember? Yeah. Like how how she said that? That's ironic because I was just about to go sit on her bed and say I'm sorry, I don't want to disrespect you. I was about to say that. Nellie? I'm sorry. But, I really just want to sit and talk with you. Will you come talk with me? Now watch everything in the hall go just bananas. Nelly right. really likes creepy dolls. Yes. <laughs> it's it's gotten cold, right? Oh. Yeah, for sure. Nelly, can you give us a sign that you're just here? Death. 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 Huh. Nelly, I know you died here. Is that what you're talking about? Or is somebody else talking about death? Maybe a nurse that caused somebody's death on accident and covered it up? Like we were talking about before? Did that ever happen here? Down, it started to have negative words. Scratch, yeah, death. Really, yes. I think we're gonna move to a different part of the hospital. But something that would be really, really cool would be if you could flicker that light down there or touch that light. If you're a nurse, there are some patients here that need to sleep and that light is really bright. Could you please turn it off? 
part of your job. Help them get good sleep. where at all times at right. night they'd be working. Right. These are just patient rooms where people would be just chilling and going to bed. Exactly. And you know what's interesting is that right when we started, that proximity meter went off. Yeah. And it was like someone came out of their room and was like, right. like seeing what we're doing, then went back Don't into the room. Don't antagonize. Don't antagonize. Yeah, just let us sleep. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. There's a lot of... I about her, you know, be respectful during the interview, right, Miss mm -hmm. Nelly? We're in there sitting in her bed, so maybe we're getting kind of like scolded. You know, they're the sleep, they're sleeping here. So I think we should pack up. Do you want to go down to the yeah. children's area? Let's do the children's area. Okay. At this point, we decided to go to the third floor where the nursery is located. Uh, there's a nurse that's, I guess, told people to like shush and. Be quiet if you will uh, it was more quiet than I expected there were some things that happened but it seemed like maybe people were sleeping or the nurse wanted us to be quiet or the nurses so it, it was a little bit of both like you felt things there and yet it was it was kind of so quiet like again it was like a quiet hospital quiet hours if you will but then sometimes when it's so still that's when some big things can start to happen. All right, so we're set up right now in the nursery where the children of the hospital would have been, the babies. If you'll remember during our tour, we were told that the nurse in here gets kind of angry when she hears the sounds of crying babies, um, almost like she needs to go to work and whatnot, and that's what makes her become active. So we've got a speaker down there. We're going to play the sounds of crying babies, all of our stuff is set up, and I'm gonna run a DR60 to immediately record afterwards. So. Okay, is there a nurse in this area? I have a baby that's in here that really needs some help. Come in the door. My ears are popping. Okay, we're gonna ask some questions with the DR60. We're gonna do a session here. Okay. Sure. Can you come help take care of these babies? Do you like to take care of the babies here? Are you a nurse? Or are you a kid? What is this room called that we're sitting in? God, dude, that scared the shit out of me. The sound effect is called Room Full of Crying Babies. <laughs> okay, pause that, let's listen. Okay. I got you, I can pause it. Can you come help take care of these babies? Do you like to take care of the babies? 
People getting murdered. Oh, that's a, that is such a bad sound. I don't really hear much. Maybe I'm a kid. Okay, little Timmy, baby Susan, any of the children of the hospital. Remember how you said you were singing before? Well, I'm gonna play a song and we're gonna sing. Can you try to sing along? Okay, so did you like that? That's the first time. I was kind of messing Is around that the too. First time that we've had it? That's the first Rumpot hit. Bring around the rosy. and playing with those lights but can you give us an idea that you're still here can you tell us your name or make a, a noise of any sort I'm gonna turn the light off for a second and go full IR. Yeah. I like that better actually. Good for you. Okay. <laughs> you went and played with those red lights once. Can you do it again? Or just step in the door and that little blue light changed that color from blue to a different color. There's just like a shadow that went across the door. It's so quiet. What was that? Day. The spirit talker said music. Really? Yeah. Was that what picked up on there? Yeah. 
So you like the music that I just played? Can you give me a sign by touching one of those things? Playing with the ball in the chair? I'll play one more song before we go if you do something for us. That's weird though, music? Yeah. What the hell? Right. Even if you oh, knock on something. Just like for some reason on edge and I shouldn't be, but I am. You You're know? on edge? Yeah, just for some reason, I don't know why. But... She's not deathly silent. Remember though, remember last night, the hospital, how silent it was? Yeah. During periods, I mean, it's like a lot of activity. It's kind of how it feels again. That's it. That's not good. Hmm. Okay, this is your last chance before we leave. Because pretty soon we're gonna go down to a different floor, so please say one thing to us. Did you like the music? You can touch those red lights again. Are you a nurse? If you just give us one more sign that you're here, we'll leave. Me. Hear me. It's weird though, I feel like almost creepier all of a sudden. Like something has kind of come in. Because there's a bunch of noises in the hallway when you were just listening to that. Died here. Many died here. That's what it said. Yep. Many died here. Really? It's true. It feels colder in here. I'm, I'm like freezing. I know. We're going to get ready to go from this room. Do you want to tell us anything else or do anything to let us know you're with us? Oh, oh. Benjamin. Benjamin. Benjamin Buttons. Benjamin. He's here. Okay, well. All right, well, since it's so quiet up here, I think that we have agreed that we're going to move on. And now it's time for Jeff and I to do our solo sessions where we're going to be in very different parts of the hospital completely alone. We did it last night, though, and it, it was, that was really active when we it did it alone. So. It was. Yeah, they like me better than you, so. <laughs> Action kicks into high gear. Yeah. Papa's Books is here. Okay. <laughs> Serious ghost time. Yeah, okay, let's pause. So after scaring Jeff a few times in the nursery with the music and the babies crying, you know, once again, it felt quiet. It felt almost like, you know, this was a hospital and it was late at night and this is when the patients would have been asleep. It was almost like the ghost of a nurse was just standing off in the corner telling us, shh, quiet, it's, it's nighttime, the patients are in bed. And that's why we wanted to do a solo session, just like we had done the night before at Harriman Hospital. This time, Jeff headed down to the kitchen area, which our tour guide said was her favorite area to investigate where she felt there was a presence that night. And I headed to the area where Buddy hangs out. Buddy being the ghost of the little boy who picked up a venomous snake, was bitten, and died right there in that room. And things were about to get very active. Okay. Let's go, man. You ready? Well, Are you filming? Yep. Let's go! See you on the other side. All right. Good luck. We're going to different floors. I wish we were playing that game. I hope. I hope. It's off. Chase go, side go. <laughs> la, 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 la. La, 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 la. I hope. I hope. I hope. I hope. Where do I go? This way? Yep. Oh, look at it. Trash goes down the stairs. That's, That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Fits me right there. Uh, That's perfect. Take a pick of that. Yeah, good for you. So, yeah. There's somebody right there. 
Buddy? Is that you? I was just setting up. Okay. Well, that was kind of freaky. Whoever's coming in here, I'm a friend. I'm just here to hang out. Thanks for coming in. Both devices all of a sudden. Okay, so there is somebody in here. Can you stop that? Dude, you cannot make this shit up. What the hell? You saw me on this static camera, literally just set it up, and it just started going nuts. Okay. Hold up, buddy. What the hell? Thank you, buddy. Can you stop playing with that for one second? And this thing stopped? I didn't even notice. The music box stopped. Don't worry, buddy. I, I want to play with you. I just want to set up my toys. Huh. You want to play? We can play, buddy. down here Jeff Jeff that's me are those all going off or am I tripping out I caught that. What is going on with this? Buddy, is this you? All right, so well, <laughs> so I'm alone down here now in the shadow man's hallway in the area where Buddy the little kid's ghost, the kid that was bitten by the snake who died here. This is where he's supposed to haunt. And already, the music box was not going off. Oh, right when I said that, the flashlight turned on. Is that you, buddy? Already, before, the music box was not going off. Now it's going crazy. The REM pods were not going off. Now they're going crazy. And the flashlight's turning on. So I'm gonna try contact Buddy and see if he can come out. I've got a spirit talker running and the envoy yes or no. All right, Buddy, if you're here, I would love to talk to you. I am I can be like your bigger brother. I'm not scary. I'm not afraid of you, dude. We can play with your favorite toy if you show me what toy you wanna to play with. I think you're playing with that right there. But can you stop playing with that thing and come touch that red light in the the middle of that bed again like you just did? Interesting that that actually just stopped when I asked it to. I asked him to stop touching it. It completely stopped. I haven't moved from this chair. Oh. Buddy, can you please come over towards the bed? Oh! Oh! Buddy! Thank you, buddy. Okay, can you step away from there? Can you step away from the bed? Now that we're here? Are you laying on your bed right now? Oh my god. I don't even know how to react to this. Like, this is a lot of energy right now. 
And my spirit talker down here is completely frozen. It's on, but it's frozen. I'm gonna restart it. Buddy, I think you touched it a little too hard. Also, if there's a shadow man, or a nurse, or somebody in this abandoned hospital that wants to come talk to me, you can come into the room too. I'm right here. It's weird, the music box just stopped. It's like, it's like whatever is setting it off is following me. Oh, there you go. Okay, come on in. Okay, I think you've played with this thing enough. I'm gonna turn it off. Okay, this said, outdoors arrest. I don't know what that means. I'm gonna run my, uh, I'm gonna run my EVP recorder as well. All right, buddy. I have all these toys. You see all those balls on your bed? Or that flashlight over there near the fire truck. What I really love is for you to go push one of those balls off of the counter over there. If you see them, I set them up for you. Or just come and talk to me and use your voice. Can you tell me your name? Or make a sound for me in here? Yeah, can you light that flashlight up fully? There. There? Yeah, right there. Can you light that up all the way if that's you that I'm talking to, buddy? Sit and talk. Sit and talk? If you'll notice, I am sitting in a chair and talking. That's exactly what I'm doing to you. You can also go touch that little box right here. You see it says yes or no. You can touch it and let me know your answer to my questions. Threatening. Threatening. Who's threatening? No. You're not threatening? Buddy, let's play a little game. Can you touch something in here? Touch that red light again or the flashlight? This is my land. Maybe this isn't Buddy. Can you set off one of these devices if you're not Buddy? Maybe you're the Shadow Man? I hear a noise behind me. Are you okay? Are you okay? That sounds almost like a nurse or something. Are you okay? Or it could be Buddy. Or the Shadow Man. I don't know, it's really confusing. Threatening. Are you okay? I'm fine, I'm not scared or anything. I'd love for you to push one of those balls off the ledge over there. You see that on the cabinets? Just go touch one of those little toys I set up. Or use your voice. Hello? I keep thinking I'm gonna be looking down that hallway and just see a shadow person lean around or a nurse come around with the clipboard. It's time for your checkup. Ugh, I don't like that. She scares people. <gasps> she scares people. Is it a nurse you're talking about that scares people? Okay. If you're a nurse, I'm not afraid of you. I'm not scared of you. But I'd love to see... I'd love to know more about you. Oh, the flashlight's on all the way. Okay, can you turn that flashlight on if I am talking to Buddy? Window. see a window in here. 
Can you turn that flashlight on if I'm talking to the shadow man? How about turn it on if I'm talking to a nurse? Are you a nurse here? I can scare you. You can scare me? I know I've said multiple times that I'm not scared. I'm all alone here in this big empty part of this hospital. Why don't you do your best to try scare me? What would really scare me would be if you slammed a door. The flashlight just turned on. If you slammed a door, you screamed at me, you pushed one of these balls off right here. If you have that much power, I'd think you could do one of those things. Or even ride that little bike right there. This is a really weird place because it's like active all of a sudden and then quiet and then active and then quiet, which is really odd. Like when I first got here, it was super, super like music box, REM pod, cat ball noises. I will say though, I, I feel kind of um, nauseous right now. All of a sudden. Kill. You want to kill me? Is that what you're saying? A bad spirit. Hmm. And I can scare you. It's well, dangerous. It's dangerous. Well, from, oh, I got to chill actually all of a sudden. Like an actual full body um, energy just came in here. Oh. Oh. All my hair is on end. Do you see that, guys? Okay, well, then I don't feel like you're the little kid. Who are you? I want to, like, hear your footsteps. I want you to, why don't you throw something at me? My legs. My heart gave in. What? So, I don't know. It sounds like there's a patient or somebody in here. Definitely someone who died here. My legs. My heart gave in. I, he's dangerous, or it's dangerous. It was about to say he's over there, and then I got a text from Jeff saying, let's go back and meet, but. Yes, it's a patient. Okay. All right, well, I'm gonna go meet Jeff in the ER triage area. I gotta pack this stuff up, but I'm gonna keep rolling in case something happens, so. Okay, guys. Colin and I have split up now. Um, I'm in the kitchen area of the hospital where there's a lot of activity and I'm gonna have a REM pod, cat balls. I've got a static cam running. I've got um, my, completely black, I can't see without this light here at all. I've got a trail cam set up towards the cooler down there in this area anything coming out of the cooler and as I said um, REM pods cap holes around here and I'm also going to run some spirit talk EVPs the Oculus 5 and I am going to do some SLS okay so for now I'm going to sit down here okay guys anybody that's here I know the kids like to play down here as well if you can make any noise there's some balloons around I have some cat ball, some balls that light up that you can play with, the red light you can touch. I'm just gonna sit here and listen to you. Can you make a noise to let me know that you're here? Oh, cat, cat ball, cat ball, cat ball, cat ball, cat ball. Sorry. Thank you. Can you make that light go off with it, please? Wow. I've got like a smell. During the. Just 
You can come in and join me. I'd like to talk with you. Can you make that cat ball go off again for me? Or play with the light a little bit if you would, just to give me a little bit of a different uh, a sound of anything like... Oh shit. Okay, you seem to like that step right there. Is that where you like to actually hang out the most, do you think? Can you move that balloon there? Okay, that must be the area that you want me to focus on there. Can you make that red light go off again? Or move the balloons? So once again, it's, sorry I'm sniffling, it's really cold down here. I got over here, this area is where the activity so far. And um, this is supposed to be, again be a place where it's active with kids. But please give me a sound. Can you come can you come in and show yourself to me? I'm not afraid of you. I know you're not going to harm me. But if you could actually show me some you know where you're kind of at, that would be awesome. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. Can you make that hit the balloon, please? Oh, got some chills, man. I don't know why, just this one area right there. So with the SLS, what happens is um, this camera is on IR and it's really hard to turn off. So I'm going to do a little bit of SLS and only film the screen. Okay, do you want to show me yourself? You like this step area. You know, that's the area that you've been telling me to kind of come to and play with. Can you make a noise with your voice or play with anything in here? Thank you once again. It is, it is the same area. See that straw? I'm sorry. It's the same area over here, right there. Okay, I'm gonna switch again. Apologize. Okay, again, you're making you like that area. I haven't had anything else happen around me. Let's sit. Oh, 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 shit. God damn it. Okay, thank you. Oh my gosh. Can you come farther to me? Can you, oh, it's way out here touching almost my leg. I'm gonna move this camera a little bit, sorry. Damn it. Can you show up on the other one, please? On the steps too? You are way out. Please make a noise or move up the balloon. Make the light go off. There were two of you. Go ahead and show Show both of you. Oh my gosh. What are you doing? Oh, there, there's the cat ball. I gotta show it. Gotta show it. I'm sorry for the strobe. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Oh. I can't move this. I gotta show the cat ball. Sorry for the strobe. But this guy is big. Again, I'm Jeff. I forgot to introduce myself, and I'm just here to acknowledge that you guys are here in the kitchen. Are you hungry? If you're hungry, let me know it. Okay, so we did have a couple figures. We had a really good one that showed up there. Um, I had one up on the ceiling. Unfortunately, it's getting late, and uh, I don't have a lot of time, so I wanna move on and do a few other things. Thank you. Thank you for showing yourself. I'm gonna turn this off. Okay. Okay, so we have very little time here. Um, thank you for communicating with me. I'm gonna turn on 
a light so I can see again. Thank you. And we had the Obelus 5 to use a spear box. And we got the, uh, oh, shit. Okay, that's not me. Okay, do you not want me to go? Can you move those balloons? Please move the balloons. Please move the balloon. Thank you so much. I'm sorry that I'm... Okay, I'm sorry that I have to go here, but... Okay, guys, I'm not. I'm not. There's no way that's me. Can you move this balloon? I'm going to pick up this light. Look at this. See how close that I have to get? Look how close you have to get before that green goes off. Thank you. Jeez, my goodness. Okay. Goodbye. Okay, guys. Um, Colin's saying we've got like about 25 minutes left. So I'm going to pack up. I have a trail cam um, that I'll review later. I've got uh, the trail cam at several locations that we were at this trip that I'll be reviewing. And actually I've got some trail cam photos. One from the USS Lexington and one from the House of Rock in Corpus Christi that I think are really, to me, really amazing that I'm going to post or ask Colin if he wants to post them, but I, I might post them on my Instagram and I'll let you know. Um, so yeah, for now, uh, this is the kitchen. It goes back in there and it goes in all these rooms, but this is the main area here and you can definitely smell stuff down here like a kitchen, like she said in the interview. But anyway, I'm going to go meet up with Colin. We'll see you in a bit. So Colin and I split up and I went to the kitchen and set up some tools and specifically an area that you'll see the steps uh, where there was a balloon. Uh, I put like uh, a REM pod and a cat ball and that's where things really was focused for me. I had a lot of activity with the REM pod, with the cat ball, and then I got an SLS figure that showed up that kind of spread all the way towards me. So the kitchen became very active it really was focused on that uh, that that step if you will it's like they that kid or kids I actually had two figures at once but I only captured the one I think I felt like they wanted to hang around that area for some reason so my solo session was really interesting I don't know if it was buddy coming through to talk but it felt like you know at first there was somebody there just making their presence known the energy was thick and then all of a sudden, it got really quiet. And that's when I got the responses that were more angry, more violent. And, you know, up, up on the third floor, we got the words crime. Um, I had gotten kill. There were, there were a lot of weird things that were, they weren't making sense at the time, but as we went throughout the night, they started to add up in my mind. And it would only start to make more sense as we continued. And at that point, we wanted to head to the shadow man's hallway, the doctor's, the doctor's corridor, and we wanted to sit there and just listen. And when we listened, we heard some, some pretty unnerving things. Okay, so Jeff and I met back up. We thought we were done here at 12, but turns out we have more time. So we're gonna go walk down the shadow man's hallway. I'm gonna use the talk function on the ovulus right here. We're gonna use the red light because it allows you to see shadows and everything better. And then we're going to run Spirit Talker and just set up a REM pod and sit down there for a little bit. Hey, so we're here in the Shadow Man's hallway. We heard there's a large shadow guy that likes to hang out here. Can you come out and talk to us? 
Can you make a loud noise for us, please? Can you make a really loud bang or open up the door in the room that you're in? Got a little bit of anxiety here. Even louder, please. Especially if you're the thing or person that just said that you can scare me and you're dangerous. Why don't you show us how scary you are? Do you live down here in this hallway? Okay, Big Samuel. <laughs> it's getting colder. Can you show? It's like there's a breeze behind me. I know. Can you show yourself? We're, we're really friendly. We just want to see you. Did you set that music box off? Do it again, please. Did you die of lung cancer? If it's a yes, you can walk out in the hallway or touch that little red light or say the word yes. Up here. Hey. Need help. Need help. Here in the background. Lungs need help. Hmm. Maybe it's somebody who's like coming to the hospital for help. Because this is the old entrance right there. Lucy. Hmm. That's much better. Lucy, are you the one that is making the noises? If so, make the music box go off. Call out. Lucy! 
Lucy, I'm calling out. Come forward. Come out. Hello? You don't need to be terrified. We're, we're friendly. We're here to help. Jeff. Jeff. Yes, I am. I'm. I, my name is Jeff. What do you want to say to me? Can you walk down the hall towards us? Thank you. Keep coming. Would you show yourself if we turned the lights out? Knock once if you would. Beware. Need help. I think we should kill the light for a second. Yeah, well. Jess, if your life was taken and it's you, can you make the music box go off again? Need help. The whole night's been talking about a crime, a kill. It's really strange. Did a crime happen here? Was there a nurse that worked here that wasn't looking out for the best of the patients? Or a doctor. Or a doctor? We cannot. What? And I'm knocking right now. Knock. Okay. Then go ahead and knock. Maybe that's what you're doing down at the end of the hall. Like, like this? I lied to you. Can you knock like this? This is my land. Can you push that balloon towards us? Use your energy and just kick it down here? Forgive my sins. And need help so many times? Yeah. Maybe we're not talking to the victim. Maybe we're talking to somebody who actually killed a patient. Hmm. Or patients. Okay, we're gonna have to leave. Is there anything else you'd like to say? I mean, we'd love to see you. Doctor, are you here? I need my insulin prescription filled. Yeah, can you go to the pharmacy and pick it up for me? Something has to set it off. Yeah. I mean, it just doesn't just. Blue eyes. Blue eyes. It just doesn't just. That's me. I have blue eyes. Mm -hmm. I have blue eyes. Are you saying you see me? Before I leave, can you walk over to me with my insulin? Need trust. I can protect you. Can we go do the Estes? Yeah. One more thing? Anything? 
We're gonna pack our stuff up. So as uh, most of the investigations we do, um, we end with an Estes session and we went to the body room, which is where the guide said is her, she felt the most active part of the hospital. And that's where, again, we, we found out some things, uh, talked to a surgeon that we didn't quite expect and got some kind of unnerving answers. Hey everybody, it's Colin here. Thank you for watching today's video. Hello to all the new subscribers and hello to the rest of our beautiful, wonderful, spooky family. As you know, every single week here on the channel, we give away a free gift bag to one lucky viewer of the show. And this week to enter the contest, all you have to do is like today's video, like smash that like button and comment, let's go to the hospital in the comments section below. I'm gonna give you all 10 seconds to do this now. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So go comment, you can comment multiple times. It helps the video so much. And we have some really exciting collabs coming up soon. Videos with Exploring with Josh, Nick Groff from Ghost Adventures and Twin Paranormal, along with some other really, really crazy investigations, locations and evidence. But anyways, let's get back to today's video. Thank you for listening to my little spiel. I love you guys so much and stay spooky. So it's the end of the night here at the South Pittsburgh Hospital. This place is incredibly haunted, as you know from the interviews, from the evidence that we've already captured on camera tonight. We were just in the Shadow Man hallway in the pitch black. That was an eerie experience, but according to some of our evidence, um, there seems to be some sort of an angry entity here. Like it was telling me it's dangerous when I was in the room um, alone where the little boy is supposed to haunt. Um, he's coming, all sorts of aggressive words. And based on what happened earlier tonight, it seems like there may be a nurse that either on purpose or accidentally took people's lives. But we're right now here in the body room. This is where they would have stored the corpses of individuals that were here at the hospital um, that passed away. They never had a morgue here, so this was that storage area. And it's supposedly one of the most haunted places here in the complex. So I'm gonna put these on. I'm going to be listening to the spirit box audio through these headphones with the blindfold on and Papa Spooks, Jeff, my dad, is going to be asking questions. So, uh, let's do this, man. Okay. Okay, and obviously he can't hear me at all. It's like having some on a 10 radio blast in your ears on your headphones. The box. Okay, can you tell me who your name is, first of all? That's with us right now. Who's in the room with us? Either your name or your. Cousin. I was left. Oh, father. Okay. Father um, of who? Are actually a, a priest father? Can you give me a name? Yeah. Okay. What's the name? Who's coming through? Come with me. Where to? Where do you want to go to? I'm dead, I'm dead. Okay. Can't hear you. So you're a father, you're dead, and you want us to go somewhere. Where do you want us to go, or where would you like to go? Would you like to go to somewhere in this hospital? She deserved it. So what did you do to her? Did you do something to this woman? Lost her life. Were you California? Okay. Sounds like again. No. Nope. Hmm. You've maybe helped this person. Pass. Got my license. Are you a doctor from California? Got your license in California that practiced here? Make it a little bit clearer. Behind you. Okay, you got to make it clear who I'm talking to. Are you a doctor, a patient, nurse? I'm a something surgeon. Okay. It sounds like a surgeon from, you went to school in California or from California. Ha <laughs> ha. And you took someone's life or was it an accident or did you purposely take this woman's life? 
because you said she deserved it. So, what did you do to God, her? God, it's cold in here. I don't know if you're feeling it's getting colder. Yeah, it's cold. My my feet are freezing. That's me talking, not spirit box. Okay, again, it seems like I'm talking to the surgeon that went to school in California, and you said she deserved it. Maria. Maria, okay. What did you do to Maria? Did you botch a surgery, maybe? Or purposely do something in surgery? Let's talk to the surgeon again. He watched me. Are we talking to Maria or the surgeon? I'm worthless. I'm using you. Okay, once again, though, I'm trying to figure out who I'm talking to. Is it the surgeon or someone else? The lung. Okay, so I'm assuming it's the surgeon you did something with Marie. California again. And you're from California. You did lung surgery, it sounds like, is what I'm, I'm going to guess. Is that right? You did something purposely to her lung to take her life? Does that sound correct? Can you please answer? Only me? once. Okay. So you did do it. That's the one time you, you actually took someone's Don't life. Don't try to trick me. I'm not. It sounds like you're the surgeon that went to school or is from California that did a lung it surgery. It wasn't an accident. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The one time you actually purposely killed this woman during, during lung surgery. Have you killed anybody else? Don't get any ideas. Yeah, no. I've never killed anybody, but have you killed more than the one? Tell the truth. Have you killed more than one? Oh, I just heard a very creepy male. Okay, that would sound yeah, like something a surgeon would say. You know, surgeons are very, I'm a retired eye care provider, and they're very, very need to talk strong-headed i'm like way colder all of a sudden too dude yeah. well you are talking right now so let's get back finally i'm wondering if you've killed other people are you a serial what's the point i'm trying to find out if you're a serial killer are you how many others have you killed it seems like you are how many others have you killed you need to answer a few okay more Hmm. Did you kill them all during surgery to cover it up? I'm with them now. Okay, so in the afterlife you're with the people you killed. Can you give me a name of one of them? It's Marie? In the hall. So you're actually here in the hospital with them. So you're a surgeon. You're either from or trained in California. You purposely have killed people during surgical operations, like lung surgery. Does that sound about right? So you are a serial killer that's never really was never really caught. Is that right? It's time for what? What's the time for? Are you still coming fit? soon? The end. Hmm. Do you um, hurt people in the afterlife? Uh. Again, do you hurt people still that you're with in the afterlife? Or have you quit those ways? Which is it? She was free. I loved it. Okay, can somebody else step forward? How about one of the victims of this guy? Let's talk to one of the victims. Can you, can you come forward? Anybody? Tell us your story. Pineapple. Well, pineapple could I'm mean, on the way. Could mean welcome. Again, can a victim step forward of the surgeon that took your life and tell me who you are? Introduce yourself. Hello. Okay. Hi. Who are you? Can you give me your name? Can you tell me your name? I keep hearing this weird in the background of uh, a lot of the sweeps like a screaming that's like really quiet, but it's like, <sighs> like that. I don't know if that makes any sense with what you're saying, but mm. it keeps, 
<sighs> like an agonizing almost. Yeah, I wonder if it's a victim that really can't communicate. Um, Wisconsin. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna. I guess I want to talk to the surgeon one more time. Are you continuing to hurt people on the other side? Be truthful again. You have nothing to lose. Ooh. <laughs> seven boxes. Um, I'm going to take that as seven, like, boxes, like, people were buried in. Like, you, you killed seven people. Is that right? Did you kill seven people? Because you just said a few more. But you never gave me the number. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying... Scalpel. <laughs> seven boxes. So the scalpel would have been used in your surgery. Cancer kills. Okay. I'm assuming it's lung cancer. Is that how you died? Did you smoke? I think that you're... Uh, on they did. I did, okay. I, I think you're in an uncaught serial killer that was about I'm walking up from the hospital here and it sounds like you died yourself it sounds like of cancer there is so where do you, you feel that I'm sorry okay so where are you right now where do you live tell us the place you feel you live right now below the <laughs> Woman's voice. Go to bed. Yeah, that one was really clear. We kind of felt like um, it's really late and people here are all sleeping, so it's been quiet now. But we need we need to let come to an end here. The doctor's name. Can you give me the doctor's name? Tell me your name, the doctor. In my, I my eyes closed in here. The my what I'm seeing is a woman with her mouth open like this but her mouth and both eyes are black like holes and then dark long flowing hair i don't know if that has anything to do with what you're talking about but i'm it looks like she's drowning almost now you will but i can see it very clear it's like a, a frantic woman and it's almost shifting too whatever that would mean i i again feel like it's Back to lung cancer and drowning in kind of your the lung, unfortunately. This victim, it sounds like to me, of the surgeon. And never, how many ways? And it was, I believe, Maria Maria. I got creative. Hmm. Yeah, now I think the surgeon, again, is your creative ways of killing people during surgery. And you got away with it. Would you say that's true again? There was no love. I know you're from California. I went to school there. You're a serial killer that was never caught. It sounds like you killed seven Eagles. seven people. Are you God, still it's cold. Are you still killing? Are you still killing people in your next life? Right now where you're the at. Prestige died. Well, I could see if you were Just go. If you were a surgeon prestigious surgeon and now you're in a different place that doesn't have the prestige that sounds like it makes sense but are you done talking do you want us just to leave now should we go now do you want to end this if you do you're going to tell mm, I heard a very creepy mm -hmm. okay like very like over like three or four mm -hmm. frequencies mm -hmm. okay so you want to end it <laughs> so then would you Communicate that to Colin that you want to quit. You got a noose, or okay. Do you want to tell Colin that you're done? Give him the idea in his head that you want to quit this. Bring me apples. Hmm. I think that we're kind of done because we know who we communicated with. It'd be great if we had your name to look it up in the historical books here, but I'm sure you won't give me your name, the doctor, surgeon, but let's end it. Let Colin know that you're done. Candy. 
Okay, I really don't want to talk to you anymore, so... Hmm... 1998. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna knock on Colin's shoulder to stop him unless you're going to. Tell him you're done. Talking to me. Okay, I don't want to talk to you anymore. But I want to be finished, so make Colin have an uneasy feeling then and make him quit. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because I, I've been telling you at this last, make Colin have a feeling so that he feels like he's going to have to be done. Really? Yeah. Just now? Just now, yeah. I just, I'm, I'm so cold. Yeah, it's and cold. I felt like yeah. I wasn't really making any sense. Yeah, well, I think... Anything? Well, I mean, yeah, it's, you know, you have to try to follow a storyline the best you can, but it sounds like we were talking to, to me, a surgeon who was a serial killer, he killed seven, had seven coffins or boxes, and he said more, he, you, you'll see. Interesting. Yep, and he's from California, went to medical school in California. California twice, I remember hearing. And he was um, creative, with a scalpel, uh, yeah. and like, <laughs> kind of creepy. What the lungs, hell? you saw that person, the one yeah. with black, drowning, and that to me would be like drowning your lungs, you know. We talk, oh, about, we talk about that. Interesting. You, you drown interesting. in your own fluids. Yeah. That's how people kind of expire. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yeah, you're right. So I think it's a... Because one liquid fill your lungs? It does. Yeah. yeah. And so I think that's what I felt out of this and where I took this. I felt is the surgeon who got away with seven basically deaths. He got creative in a surgical room and, uh, and cancer. I think he died of cancer. That's my, my mm. death from that he actually died of cancer. Weird. Possibly lung cancer, but you know, I don't know. When I heard surgeon, it was like very clear. Yeah. Whenever that, you know, for whatever yeah. you were asking at the time is surgeon. And, you, and then that, mm -hmm, right. and you, was really, yep, that was really, and that was a direct answer to me. Really? Mm -hmm. what, what was the question? I can't remember, you're gonna have to go back and look, but it was direct, a direct answer to my question. This is the end of our night here. Yeah. I think that we're gonna um, we're gonna wrap it up because we're also way past the time that yeah. we're supposed to be in here. Yeah. I think we were supposed to be out of here like 40 minutes ago, right. but they were gracious and allowed us to stay a little later. But we'll wrap it up later on camera. So in the end, my thoughts on the Pittsburgh Hospital is that it's a mix of kind of kind of good and evil. Colin had conversations with uh, a small boy who seemed, you know, like positive. Uh, on, on our end with the Estes session, uh, it seemed like we maybe uncovered uh, to us a doctor, a surgeon that seemed to possibly kill a number of people like a serial killer and get, got away with it. Uh, I felt uh, with surgical techniques. Um, so all in all, it, it's got a mix of, the, of good and evil. And to me, again, a very interesting location with a, a lot of activity understandably be in a hospital. So overall, our trip to Tennessee, of course, has been a great one as they always are. I get to spend the time with Colin. It's been exhausting. Every night it's 3 to 5 a.m. that we're done, but worth it. Met a lot of great people at these locations as we always do. Saw these locations that I'd never seen, never knew existed for the most part. And again, got exposed to all this history that gets lost. So Tennessee, I would come back to again. There's a lot of history here that's left to explore. And I'd encourage all you guys to, to visit and do your own research because the spirits are there. They, they, they wanna talk and you can learn a lot more history about the US coming to these places as well. But overall, great trip. So the wrap up thoughts that I have, this place was very, very interesting. You know, there was so much history there, so many, so many people that died that passed through the walls, so many individual spirits that haunt the old Pittsburgh hospital. I mean, it was really, really an interesting night to be able to talk and connect with all of these energies and, and people that have passed on. But what I thought was the most compelling was this surgeon, this doctor that may have been, I don't know if you'd call it a serial killer, but somebody who enjoyed ending lives. Now, I know that the place 
doesn't have, you know, dark, demonic, anything like that activity, but based on our evidence, getting the word crime, kill, um, devices beeping after certain questions were asked, and then that Estes at the end where that was crazy, hearing about a surgeon who may have been covering his tracks and murdering patients for the thrill of it, maybe even for insurance money, who knows, but in a case like that, with a killer surgeon or doctor, they may have been so good at covering up their tracks that you could never know who exactly the person was. It's not like you could go back in the records and find, oh, this person had eight mysterious deaths. They would have already been caught. This guy or girl, I don't know who the doctor would have been, um, may have been so good at covering it up that they're still out there. They died, you know, and, and they've never been brought to justice. But... It's just another mystery to add to the list of possible entities at the uh, old South Pittsburgh Hospital. And it was a good trip. That was the end of the trip. But for Pop Spooks and I, thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts on this investigation below. Let's start a discussion on what you think may be haunting the hospital and what you thought of our video series. But uh, yeah, it's Colin here. Thank you for watching and stay spooky. So our trip to Tennessee was a very interesting one. Wheatland's Plantation was obviously, I think, the standout in activity with the ping pong ball, the scratch, the incredible Estes sessions, the confirmations. Brushy Mountain was terrifying. That place, that is one place that actually scares the hell out of me. And I'm shocked that I did a solo session in there. Both hospitals that we investigated were great as well, Harriman and Old South Pittsburgh. Very different types of hauntings, a positive haunting, a better feeling at Harriman, and then Old South Pittsburgh, not negative, but almost like a spirit that had something to get off of its chest, you know? It's not like it was threatening us so that it was going to kill us. It almost sounded like it felt guilty for what it did. In all these locations, each and every one, haunted as can be, even the museum that we did the little mini bonus video at uh, East Alcatraz Crime Museum. But as always with the end of these series it's uh it's a weird feeling having to pack up it's my last night with my dad i love uh getting to spend time with him to see him and there's just so much more mystery out there there's so many there's thousands of places to go investigate and i feel like our paranormal journey you know it still has a long way to go and there are answers that we desperately crave but we just haven't gotten yet but thank you all for watching our Tennessee series. Thank you all for tuning in week after week and joining us on this crazy, wacky, spooky, scary adventure. But from here, just outside of Knoxville, Tennessee, for the last time this trip, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for the comments, the likes, the love, the donations, the everything that you guys have done. And thank you for making this possible for my dad and I to do. But it's onward to the next, uh, next place. We've got some really big, really cool collabs and, uh, and locations set up for the next few months. But yeah, we're going to go to Top Golf and enjoy our night. This is our last night here. Thank you all for watching. We love you so much. And as always, say it with me at home. Stay spooky. Peace out, everyone. Hello! <laughs>